In this video, I'll show how to get a Django app up to production uh, from getting a domain to all the DNS server stuff and actually deploying it. Uh, so yeah, let's see that. So I'll name my project Django Cutter, like Django Cookie Cutter, because that's what we'll be using for this. So if you don't know what Django Cookie Cutter is, it's a pretty nifty uh, package where you can use a pre-built template, which is production ready. I use it for one of my sites, which has 150 users in any given time. Yep, around that. And it has about 700, sometimes maybe 800, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's at an uptrend. So slowly going up. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is production ready. It's been production tested, I guess. Uh, so you can, you can feel free to use it. All right, so how you can get started with the Django Cookie Cutter template is first install it, uh, which I already have installed. So pip install this. Uh, just go to this one, uh, this URL first, and then do the steps here. I'll just go start from the second one, which is actually starting a Cookie Cutter template. So that, let's start. Yes, let's re-download it. So this should take a few moments. All right, now I'll name my project Django Cutter. Yeah, it will be, the slug will be the same, so I won't put anything else. Uh, let's, let's not bother with the description. This is Mesmer. This will be, now this is going to be important. So if you already have a domain, you should put it here. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a bit of a pain to change the reference to that domain everywhere else. So for me, I'll just use uh, if I remember correctly, my domain is cutter.xyz. this one. So that's what I'll be using. So let's just put that. And you need to only put uh, without the www and HTTPS. So just not something like the one given example here. Um, for email, I'll just stick to I don't think it's, it should be fine. Let's just stick to that. Version's fine. Uh, open source is fine. Open source is fine. Open source. Uh, UTC, sure. Uh, I am on Windows, so let's go with that. I'm not using PyCharm, so yep. Uh, I will be using Docker. This is one of the most helpful uh, parts of using Django Cutter, so it doesn't really make sense why you would do it without. So yep, uh, go with Postgres. Version 14, doesn't really matter which one. Um, for the cloud provider, let's just go with none uh, because we'll not exactly be vendor locked in. For the SMTP service, let's just go with nine because I don't want to set up uh, anything for now. Use async, I am not sure about async at the moment uh, for Django, so let's just go with no. DRF is one of the crucial features, so yep. And for the front end, I, I usually use uh, front end, I would use like React or Next, so I, 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 would, I would probably not go with something like Django Compressor. Uh, Celery, I use a lot of the time, so let's go with that. Uh, Mailhawk, uh, I, I, I don't use that, so you know. Uh, Sentry, I usually use it, but uh, the errors <laughs> plug up, so I don't, I think I have any free quota at the moment, so no. Nope. And this is an important part, so if you chose three, none, uh, then you should choose yes here, otherwise it will give out an error. Uh, for Heroku, this is this tutorial is not going to talk about Heroku, so let's not go with that. Uh, for the CI tool, uh, although I usually just delete all the uh, workflows when I actually start it, so let's just go with GitHub for now. Yep, let's keep environments in VC, yes. Uh, debug, no, that's the default one, and that should have our project started. So I will now just uh, take this and because I already have a similar uh, name, I will just put that here. Let's just take it everything and put that over here. And yeah, that should be it. So let's now, let's now start our containers. So, uh, getting getting the conta like dev containers running is pretty simple. Uh, you just go docker compose dash f, which means use this file local.yaml. So there's two of them. There's local.yaml, which you should use for the dev environment. There's 
also a production.yml which you should use for actually deploying it which comes with a lot of people things uh, like having the environments uh, saved in uh, from production uh, so you can safely commit your local uh, secret keys uh, from environment without uh, worrying that somebody's going to steal your secret keys and use the same one in production so let's that's that and we do docker compose dash f and up so if you if you don't have docker compose in the meantime i guess uh, you can follow the step uh, on if you're on windows uh, what what you can do is if you're uh, if you're on windows you can just download docker desktop so docker desktop this one and this should also give you this should also give you the docker compose script so you can use docker compose like like so uh, where did it get? yeah like so otherwise if you're on linux it's a bit of a complicated situation but it's it's still it's pretty all the steps are listed out here so if you have any uh, current docker versions just remove those then sudo get apt update and then install some of these packages uh, then you want to add the gpg key so that you can actually download docker as a package then just use this command and that should uh, add it to your sources then you do apt update again and then apt install all this stuff and that should give you docker docker compose and docker cli and to verify it's running just do uh, docker dash v also works uh, so if, if, if you see docker dash v working that should rain it's working um, but if it's if it gives you an error like uh, couldn't find a specific port or something like that I think that's the error then you can just do systemctl like um, like systemctl start docker like so and that should start docker for Macs, Mac is also pretty easy you can do the same thing with docker desktop and just download that and that should install all the required scripts so there's uh it's still running uh maybe we can go a bit through the configs in the meantime so for local for django what it's actually doing is this is a good good way to know or understand how to build production ready applications uh, not to look at the local of course like that's that's for local development but for the production so what you can see are all these steps uh one of the steps is actually this is this is a good way I found to actually learn how Docker works. Uh, usually, I just end up copying something from here, um, but yeah, it's, it's still a pretty good place to learn uh, what what commands you should be using for uh, getting started with your own Docker project somewhere. Um, so in the meantime, I guess I'll also talk about what kind of applications we're using. Why 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 we even have a Docker compose file? Why not just one Docker? file so the first service is django uh, that's running in a container so django will be running go with this docker file depends on uh, postgres and redis uh, redis is for the salary because we included that and also the cache so we'll use it uh, use it for two times we have one for cash one for uh, the salary backend so what we want to discover new tasks there's postgres which is the database uh, that you can choose. Uh, you can choose a different version if you want, um, but yeah, Postgres, the latest one usually works. So uh, the volumes, uh, just so you can keep your, the data same between, so let's say your app fails or shuts down for some reason in the middle, you can just then instead of, uh, because Docker runs everything in containers, usually those containers, the data in them is not persistent so if, if it closes down and then you start it back up it you would not see it there but if you have a volume that means that you can you can then um uh, it's persistent and you can uh, on the next time you uh start it again start the container back again then the data will still be there and the per envelope are uh, coming from over here from production and this this thing is truck react and traffic what it does is uh, 
if you've heard of nginx is that something similar so it's a reverse proxy so let's say uh, i go to django cutter.xyz where does that actually lead me it leads me to a server ip address but you don't really want the user to see some server ip address on their user like a url bar so instead of that the what reverse proxy does is uh, take the url uh, kind of translate get the from the dns get the server ip and instead of uh, kind of re replacing the url on the search bar it just uh, sends the context of the uh, current url uh, over to your server and it will still keep the same like it would be django carter.xyz sas home for example instead of like one to seven or something 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 slash home right and this depends on django so it only starts when django starts because otherwise there's really no point on starting profi act and yeah so that's profi act uh basically you can think of it as as uh something that's well uh if you've heard of nginx i think it's pretty easy to understand what traffic is doing here and redis is as i said for the caching and the uh, salary queue the salary worker is for the uh, task any async task you might have like let's say a user signs up uh, you want to send an email out to them after like let's say like, a, a day of them signing up that's what you would use salary worker for uh, salary beat you would use because like uh, with, uh, just to just to clarify on this one uh, you, you can't really use Django to have, handle async tasks like this because you can't really wait one, one, one whole day for a request to be returned back and you can only do things in Django you can only do things in Django when the request is still active right so Salary, had, salary worker handles, uh, it creates a separate process and then it does all the tasks over there instead of uh, on the main Django process. Salary beat is another service uh, that's kind of connected to salary worker, I'd say. So salary worker, it is actually only for, um, only for executing, uh, like receiving those tasks and executing those tasks, but salary beat can actually create new tasks. So let's say uh, every day, uh, let's say you, you're scraping, IMDB uh, every day and you want to get the top 10 top 100 movies every day and you want to display them somewhere uh, on your website right so uh, with salary worker you can actually do the scraping task but to manage that like if you if you know cron then salary is something like cron I guess where you can uh, handle tasks like by uh, let's say like you want to do certain tasks like five minutes after they're done or one day after they're done or every x time on a day or something like that and Flower is also connected to Salary and Salary Beat in that uh, you can monitor those tasks that you created uh, and see which tasks are actually running right now, which task failed, which task gave you errors, blah, 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 all that stuff. And it comes uh, with a lot of uh, good defaults, I'd say, uh, like the, there's Docs, uh, there's Linter, there's some pre-commit uh, configs, like trailing web spaces should be removed, uh, black for formatting your code in a kind of uh, you it it's pretty unforgiving I guess uh, in that way placate also for the linting and CI for it to opt, auto update your packages just so there's no uh, just so there's no like uh, old package that <laughs> there's some vulnerability in that that kind of breaks your whole application or it makes your app insecure in some way all right so enough talking i will now let's just let's just create something simple here um i will just uh create another actually where's the url so yeah here so let's just create let's say um let's say i'm creating some help app right so this is how you create a new app inside of uh, instead of uh, Django Free Cutter, so you have to kind of uh, preface, uh, preface this with uh, this command, so dash dash rm. So what this does is it says like this is pretty uh, straightforward. So run this script, this uh, I mean uh, run this YAML file, and then run, and then dash dash rm means that once you're done, then remove this container 
so once this this command is done, then remove this container. Otherwise, you can have several uh, unused kind of orphan containers just lying around, taking up memory for no reason. So this one is called Django. So that's a try on Django, and then Python manage dot py. Uh, I think it's called start app. Uh, I keep forgetting. So start app. Oh, that's uh, I need <laughs> I need to actually give it a name. So let's say fitness. So let's create a fitness app. All right. And one thing you notice is fitness goes outside of the main one. Um, it's it's completely fine. So what you're gonna do here is just uh, create some models. So let's say class. Um, let's say there's a set uh, which is a models dot model and it has a name oh that's yes. uh, thanks github copilot okay so there's a name repetitions weight uh, date workout and let's create another model called workout then so hope uh, github copilot is pretty all right cool so name and date and there's a workout and can I create something else maybe? Yeah, sure, let's do that. So there's a set. So that's each uh, re uh, set of repetitions. And there's a workout and each exercise can have multiple workouts. Or actually each exercise can have multiple sets. Uh, each set can have multiple workouts. So uh, let's just go with this for now uh, to uh, do the migrations let's just do the same command like uh, da, 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 manage the pi and then make migrations all right um, looks like all oh, right I haven't actually uh, added this to my config so that's why it's not detect detecting any changes so let's just go and do that so in base uh, the pi this is where you add your local apps that you created so over here let's just say fitness That should find it. Or I guess uh, I was kind of wrong, so I should actually put it inside this folder right here. So now it should. Alright, so now we created workout, set, exercise, and now let's migrate. Oops, that's a title. All right, cool. So now we have the fitness. Uh, let's just add it to admin as well, I guess. Um, I'll just use a bit of handy tandy magic. So this is what I do usually when I don't remember what's the thing for anything. And I just copy from my old self. So yeah, let's just do this. So from dot models import, uh, I think it was workout, uh, exercise. I think that's exercise, right? Um, what's what's here? Exercise. I'm making typos again. Okay, uh, that. And the final one was can GitHub Copilot find it? Nope, looks like it cannot. Um, the final one was a set. All right, so let's just copy this part. This is the admin, so we can see it in our admin. Uh, let's create that here. Let's create that here. Oops, that's uh, correct. Let's do that here. I just try to keep this naming scheme. Uh, so this, what this does is it displays all the fields available on that certain model. This is a pretty handy uh, shortcut I found. Uh, makes it easier to not have to type out every single field on a model. So let's do exercise next. And there's a set. So exercise admin and then a set admin. All right, cool. So that's that's done. Uh, let's actually have a look at how it looks. So dash admin, actually, let's create a super user results. 
So we can actually go inside and see the admin panel. Three, yep, not fine. So Mesmer, one, two, three. Uh, let's see. There are, uh, for some reason, there are no, nope. Okay. Then let's uh, start it up again. Okay, now it cannot import fitness. Uh, why is that? And it's called differently here. It should be called Django Cutter dot fitness, I believe. Now it should work. If not, something's wrong again. Okay, seems like it's working. And let's refresh. Moment of truth. And there we have it. So we can create a new exercise. June or July. July 1st X size and let's create a set for it so first set the reps and let's say 8 and 40 today and for the workout let's create a new one uh, I don't know like pops and that's today so let's save that save that save that and that works fine okay awesome so let's just create also a kind of uh, API view. So for that, I'll just uh, this is this is a bad habit of mine, but I, I keep doing it. Uh, I just copy code from my previous code. I mean, I'm copying from myself, but it's probably not a good idea <laughs> if I if I some sometime in the future just lose access to all of my code. All right, awesome. Uh, that's here. So let's just do. All right, this is a bit of a complicated one, but uh, I think it's fine. Uh, so usually what I, I, I actually go with something like DRS Spectacular to create open API views, our open API schemas, but for now we won't be needing those. So let's just go with um, that exercise and work out. And let's create some serializer for them. So let's just create the default serializers. I uh, don't remember, uh, or I mean, I, I do remember, but it's much easier to just copy paste. Change a few things from your previous work. So from Django, cutter, dot view, serializers, or actually just serializers, or actually dot uh, fitness, serializers, import. I am not sure why I'm importing. Okay, now mind. So from dot models, import uh, this stuff. And now let's do a set serializer. Um, for the model, we'll just use set. And for the ex exclude, I mean, we can do include also, also I think it's probably, um, if I remember, I think. So I think it's thunder all. So let's just go with that. All right, so from exercise, serializer, oops, exercise, and workout serializer is workout. All right, cool. Now for the views, we can do, I'm going to remove this because we're not really using open API schemas. Query set is going to be set, view set. So let's do set, and this is going to be a model view set. And the serializer is going to be a set serializer, which is going to be imported from over there. Workout and exercise. Okay, so let's just, uh, I think I'll just use all defaults. So let's just copy this over a few times. All right, so workout, serializer, and exercise serializer. Uh, exercise there, workout goes here, and uh, that should be it. And now let's just add this to the API router. So let's just create like three of those. So sets gonna be set, uh, view set, and that auto imports uh, over here. And let's also auto import the XR. Or I guess I will just auto import from over here. Exercise view set. 
And finally, there's the work out you set. So work out and exercise. Exercises, okay. And now finally, I should be able to see these on slash API. Or not, or not. Um, exercise, I am definitely missing something here. Yep, this is. I keep mispronouncing it. Awesome. And here it should probably be exercise view set. Okay, cool. Okay, now what the hell do I have it named as? Exers. Oh, okay, it's called Exer. What am I doing wrong here? I don't remember what I'm doing wrong. Oh, it's called something else. So that should be it. Typos are gonna be the death of me. Um, right, let's change to that. And this is changed to that. Okay, finally, I should be able to now see the new API views. Or uh, if only I can, maybe I need to up again. All right, now we have users, sets, exercise, view. Awesome. Uh, what other field? Oh, it's uh, not include equals all, it's uh, field equals all. All right, cool. And that's the exercise I created and the set I created. And this should be the final workout I created. Awesome. So now we can deploy it. I mean, usually you would also have a front end, but I, I'm not going to go that deep into it for now. So to deploy it, let's just first create a GitHub repo. Let's call it Django. Cutter. Yes. All right. Let's make it public. Create repo. Let's copy that up. So git uh, init. Uh, or maybe I already have a git. No, I do not. Okay. Git remote add origin. And that git commit dash m first commit. Well, I'm just making my first commit. All right, I uh, I didn't add anything, so let's fix that up. Git add dot commit first commit. Git push origin. Uh, first I remember correctly, master. Or it should be master. Okay, and yeah, that's it. So as you can see here, there's no uh, production environment over here, so we'll have to copy it over on our server manually when we do that. So that's now the process of actually deploying the app is going to vary depending on where you create a server. But in my case, I'm just going to create a server on uh, Hesner. It should be the same. Uh, once you have the server created, it's going to be the same for all uh, servers. But let's just create you the cheapest one. Let's uh, that's my SSH key. Uh, let's do that. I'm getting a lot of uh, emails from Dependabot about those about those uh, bumps, uh, package bumps I mentioned. Okay, so let's uh, SSH into it. Hopefully, it's made now. Yep. Okay. So SSH create at. You want to put the IP of the machine you just created, and if you're logging by SSH, uh, I should give you the permissions. Um, not sure why it's not letting me in. Let's try again. Yes, or maybe the question is not finished creating yet. Yep, so I'm inside. And let's now git clone it. So this piece of code, let's git clone that. All right, and we have it. So now if I see there's the Django cutter, if I go into Django cutter, and now I need to assign some domain to this so we can actually access it as a URL instead of this random user screen. Also, because we use Traffic, 
we don't need to worry about the creating SSL certificates or anything because it includes uh, a lesson prepped script so that you can actually create a certificate automatically and also keep updating it automatically. So to assign a domain for Hessener, what I use is uh, there's, they have this thing called DNS uh, console. So let's just go there. And there, I already added my Django Cutter domain. So let's not uh, manually edit that. Uh, let's let's uh, remove these ones. I'm not sure what they're here for. Probably from before when I was using. Let's remove that, that, that. And okay, so this is the value you want to change. So the A. Uh, DNS record, the A field, you want to change to your IPv4. So let's just change it to this, this, save and save. All right, so now all you want to do is check how long it takes before those All right, looks like uh, it updated already because I see all of them are now the new IP address. So if I uh, go, if I now start, or actually I, I need to do one more thing before I start. So as you noticed before, the production uh, environment variables are out of the git commits. So you need to copy them over manually. So what you need to do that for, what you need to do for that is first go into .env, so cd.envs. Now we need to make a directory, the same as here, um, called .production, and there go inside that. And now you want to copy this Django, all of it, Control A and Now you want to do nano, which is included by default on all uh, PCs. Nano, and then uh, dot Django, which is the same file as we have here. So we're creating a new file called dot Django. Now we paste it all and then we save it, enter. And then now we're going to do the same with Postgres. So dot Postgres and X, Y, enter. All right, still recording. I was afraid it's not recording for some reason. Okay. So we have that done. And now it should just run. So let's start it. So let's go back to our home directory, or I guess the project directory. Compose dash app production dot yaml. So if you notice, this is now instead of local dot yaml, it's going to be production dot yaml. Now we're going to do apt, but you might find that we do not have Dr. Compose installed because this is a new server. So now we're going to follow that guide I just mentioned about. So Docker install. Linux, or in my case, it's Ubuntu, so let's go with Ubuntu. So let's uh, let's just go through all the steps together. So yeah, so because it's a newly created server, we don't have Docker installed yet. So let's sort of get app update. It's going to take a bit of time. In the meantime, let's copy the next command. This is going to take a bit faster because it's uh, in a server where they have a lot more uh, network capabilities than your local computer. Uh, let's paste that in. Enter. Yep. Let's uh, download everything we need. And let's uh, do everything that they ask. Now we need to create a directory for the official GPG key. We'll curl it and then copy it there. That's done. Now we'll echo this. Oops, I did control shift C instead of control C. Let's do that, and that's done. And now, if we do sudo get apt-get update, it should get the Docker packages. So now, if I do uh, sudo apt-get install, now it can actually fetch it. Because before, if we did sudo apt-get install Docker, it would say it couldn't find Docker. Oops, I uh, pressed the wrong key. I should press Y, and I did. And that is installing. Now, that's pretty much it. Now, we need to make sure that Docker is running. Time. I always notice this thing whenever I see like mandb. What is mandb? It just sounds so strange, like man database. 
Okay, now that should mean Docker is here. So let's just see docker-p. So that should give you the Docker version. So it's there. But if we now try to do the same command again, docker compose up, it will say it couldn't find it. So let's just little apt get install docker compose. All right, let's install it. Or you can also install it with pip instead of uh, with docker. I mean, uh, instead of with the uh, apt-get. So let's do it now. All right, awesome. Um, aha, I remember what this is. So let's remove apt-get, remove docker-compose. So we need to actually install this with Python or pip install docker compose uh, or I guess sudo apt get uh, apt get install I always get pipped up with this one python not not the, the pip but uh, docker compose yep let's install it it's gonna take some time to install but now we're basically installing Python, even though we don't really need to because uh, it's all going to run in a container. Sounds strange that we're not you. <laughs> we don't have to install Python uh, when our entire application is built with Python, but it's just going to be downloaded inside the actual Docker file uh, or the Docker container. All right. Uh, this MandDB trigger always takes the longest time. I feel like. That's why I probably noticed it a lot. Sometimes it just freezes uh, on the step. I have to do control C and it turns out that it's fine anyways. Okay. So now if I do pip re install Docker Compose, this should install Docker Compose using Python. Hopefully this has a better um, Right, let's try that. Okay, awesome. Um, there's no Docker Compose, it says. I do not remember now what, what, uh, what was the issue. Did we not install all these stuff? I feel like we did, right? Like we installed all of this. Maybe it's just the fact that uh, system CTL start Docker. Okay, now? Okay, it still doesn't let's try the sudo command maybe. Okay, that's just sometimes that just works. Uh whenever something doesn't work with normal commands, just do sudo and it works. Okay. So it's gonna pull down all the same stuff that it did on your local. This is gonna be for the production. There's a few more things. So local, there's only Django, Postgres, uh docs, there's usually another uh, actual container for generated docs. Salary, salary bees, redis, and flower, but on the production one, there's no docs and there's an additional traffic for managing the uh, website traffic, I guess. Now, this should build everything and then make the migrations and all that chat. In the meantime, I will log in another. Now, this is a full cool thing. Root at, if I do just by the domain itself I can log in or not <clears throat> okay that's uh that's uh that's a new one usually I could just log in using oh maybe because I already added my known host keys for the other one that's probably good right but usually if you don't add it first then you can just log in with the domain instead of using using or maybe uh, after you can actually have traffic running, you can also log in using domain, what I usually do. Okay, so the thing I log into another SSH terminal for is because I need to, once this finishes and it starts the Django process, I need to also create a super user so I can actually view. So now, uh, if you notice, so before we did doc compose dash app, local.yml run dash dash rm and then python and then all your command you normally do but now instead of that we're going to do slash f 
production.yml. So now run dash dash rm, then python, manage apply, create, looper user. I don't remember if it does migrations on the first build. I think it does, but if it doesn't, we might also need to do the migrate command. This usually takes a bit, so I'll probably be back in five minutes. Okay, looks like it is done building and I'm not sure if it did the migrations. So I'll just do a migrate command. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, there's, uh, it should be Django, then manage the plan. Ah, uh, you know what? I, I just remember this might be not, not, not have been working because uh, you need to turn off the terminal and then come back in for the terminal to register a new uh, command. All right, so it looks like that didn't actually run the migration, so I did it manually. Well, let's create a super user. All right, awesome. Now, for the moment of truth, does the site work? If we go to Django Cutter.xyz, do we go to the normal page? Um, yes, let's go. Yes, we do, but there is a problem. We don't have an SSL certificate, it seems like. So let's see what that is about. All right, so couldn't get it because, aha, uh -huh. because we put the add example button. Okay, so we need to change that up. So let's just kill our processes. Let's change, uh, I don't remember where I have the example dot com. So let's just change that. Oh, here it is. So let's just change that to dot mail dot com. And uh, let's change this to mail.com, that to mail.com, and this to mail.com. I think the only the first one matters, but still either ways. Uh, fixed uh, site uh, site email. Okay. All right. Uh, let's publish that branch. All right. Uh, let's get poll. All right, sounds good. Uh, let's up again. Or actually, we need to do up with a build this time around because we changed uh, a file. This is not going to take much longer than an up, but it's going to take a bit longer, I guess. Like instead of going up in five seconds, it's now going to take about 15 or 20 seconds to recreate all the containers with the updated files. And we still have the super user created, so let's check it out. Still not up yet. Okay, so it's trying to get the new certificate. And do do do. All right, does it? Uh huh. It worked. Did it work? I think it worked. Let's see it. I don't think it worked. Uh, maybe it's gonna take a bit of time for the first uh, traffic thing to be created. Maybe let's try again, let's see if it works. Uh -huh. And now, voila, we have the SSL certificate, which means we get this lock and we don't get that warning anymore. So now if I go to slash API, uh, it says page not found because we have our permissions as, uh, what's it called? Uh, I feel like this should, Right, we need to be authenticated for this. So let's just say allow any. So now let's push that as well. Fixed permissions. Sync changes. All right, and get full. Now let's do a Docker compose dash app production dash YAML build Django. So this is re going to rebuild uh, the Django container and now we can up just Django itself, not anything else. So we don't need to recreate like Profi Egg, Redis, anything else, just the Django part. And this means we still have our page even though it it went it goes down for about five seconds. But now it's back. Uh, it still says page not found. Awesome. I don't know what that is. Uh, something is wrong here. Uh, 
Aha, here's the problem. So this is the problem. Okay, so we need to change spectacular lure, uh, allow any. I forget what it was. So I need to check the docs. <laughs> allow. There it is. So, aha, here it is. So that's that's the thing I wanted to change. So, allow any. Let's go now and fix the permissions. Sync that up. Okay. Get full. And let's build Django again from the changes we made. And turn it up. So this is running it in detached mode, which means that Django will run, but once it's done running, it will not keep like occupying this terminal. So you can do other stuff in this terminal. All right, so that should have worked. Let's see it. Uh, it's not API, it's API like so. It's gonna take a bit for it to be. Uh, let's take a slash docs. All right, now we have our own API schema, which I didn't even create. It comes <laughs> like default with a DRF spectacular, where you have this open API schema where you can try out, like, let's get all the exercises. We don't have any. Let's make an exercise. Um, let's say, yeah, sure, that, that works. I don't think we have an exercise called a zero. Oh, that's right. We're sending the request to our local server. We should instead do that to our production server. Okay. Uh, we don't have a set called zero yet. So let's create a set first called zero. Um, some set. Uh, there's a one rep, one of ten weight, and that's that's fine. That's that's the workout. Right, the workout doesn't exist yet. Let's just not worry about that for now. It's going to be a JSON error. So let's create that. Workout is required. Okay, awesome. Uh, let's create the workout then. That's what you want. Uh, test. Workout. Right, let's go. That's created our test workout. Okay, now we can create our set. Um, here, no, that's the put. Uh, okay. So do, do, do. If I remember correctly, it was uh, work, work out is zero or maybe one. Yeah, I think it's one. Right, so we created our set. Now we can create our exercise over here and some exercise. And this is going to be for set one. So execute and that's done. Now let's see, let's do it. Some one exercise, some two exercise. Okay, now we created three exercises in total. So let's see all the exercises. And there we have it. That's all of our exercises. All right. And now let's say you want to come here and add some model. How are you going to push the changes, right? So. Let's say you create a new model called, oh, I don't know, like um, person, person who is exercising, let's say, right? So person, or, or you make a change where the exercise is tied to a person, which is the user. Uh, it's not auth.user, it's users.user. And that should be good. So let's now make the migrations for this and then commit it. So let's do docker compose dash f local.yml run dash dash rm django python manage manage.py make migrations. Let's just say none. And then let's migrate. I'm not going to verify if this going to work yet. And 
All right, uh, now can be true, let's say. No equals true, blank equals true. Okay, let's remove this migrations because that was a bad migration. Okay, let's make migration again. All right, so now migrate. All right, now let's change, uh, add those changes to our commit. Let's say added person field on exercise. I, I, I am just done with this exercise typo. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Okay. So now let's get uh, I think we already get pushed, so let's get pull over here. Get pull. Now let's build out our production dot yaml Django. Oh, I am I am forgetting my commands. Uh, build Django. So this will build a new container for Django, and now we just do up dash d. For Django, so that we don't butter this terminal. And the thing about this is, you can see this is still running. This is still running, still running. It's gonna go down for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it's back. It's gonna take a bit of time, but usually it takes about 10 seconds for the whole deployment process to be finished. And your website is back online. And if you check the exercises, you're gonna see you have a person here. And if we execute it, uh, if I execute it correctly with the Django color instead of the normal one, um, there is some error, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, I do not remember what it was. So let's just check out our. Oh, I didn't. I didn't migrate yet. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, let's just do. do, do. Right, I need to, to actually migrate first. And now it should work. So let's execute now and voila, we have a null person that we just added and it took about one minute for our changes to be live and about 10 seconds of downtime for the whole website. All right, so hope that is helpful. Uh, that took about, well, that took about an hour, gee, okay. But I remember clearly, <laughs> I tried doing this without Docker before, without uh, without uh, Django cookie cutter, and it took me about a whole week to get from <laughs> to something working on my local to deployment, and then I just I had I lost motivation, like all motivation, because just making a single change in my code base was like hell. Like I had to change so many things and. God forbid I had to change servers, then I was just done because I had to do the same seven days thing again. But with this, you had the code base once, you can just follow the same steps. It takes like, you just had to install Docker, Docker Compose up, make migrate, I mean migrate, that's it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.